Frederick Vesti, uh, the newest member of the Mercedes Junior team, um, competing in Formula 3 this year with ART, um, and he's had not, not a long career so far, but he does seem that he has a long one ahead of him, or at least in the eyes of Toto Wolff. The Mercedes Driver Academy isn't necessarily um, <clears throat> prestigious as the Ferrari or Red Bull is. It only currently has five drivers in it, those being obviously George Russell, Frederick Vesti, Alex Powell, who is Jamaican and is in karting, Paul Aaron from Estonia, who is competing in the Formula Regional European Championship, and Andrea Kimi Antonelli, who is also in karting. So, you know, personally before this, I had only heard of George Russell and Frederick Vesti. I did not know about Alex Powell, Paul Aaron, or Andrea Kimi Antonelli. It has produced... Uh, Two very famous drivers in Esteban Ocon, currently in F1, and Pascal Wehrlein, who had two seasons in F1 in 2016 and 17. None of them are with Mercedes anymore. So, what has Vesti done so far? <laughs> Well, in 2016, he competed in the Formula Ford Denmark series with Vesta Hoyer Motorsport. He raced in 20 races, picking up two wins, eight podiums, and overall in the Formula Ford Denmark Championship, took fourth position. A very decent debut season in uh, single-seater racing. And he would then move on to F4 Danish Championship with Vesti Motorsport. Here he raced 15 races, 8 wins, 4, sorry, 5 poles and 15 podiums. He would get second in this championship overall. A very good season. You can see he was fairly quickly climbing the ranks already in F4. However, he did race in two other championships that season. One kind of, of uh, you know, nothing really special here, but in Formula 4 United States Championship with the Global Racing Group, he raced only two races, picked up one point, no wins, podiums or anything, and came 29th, but he only raced two races. It, it's initially kind of irrelevant, but he did race 20 run races in Formula 4 ADAC Championship with Van Amersfoort Racing. They come into play in just a moment, you'll see, in 2018, but we're still in 2017 here in the Formula 4 ADAC Championship. So 21 races, one win, no pole positions, but three podiums and 113 points. He only managed to come seventh, but um, you know, the main story from 2017 for Vesti was his second place in the F4 Danish Championship. This second place would uh, allow him to move to the Italian F4 Championship, but he only raced three races there, uh, two wins, one pole position, and three podiums. So in every race, he got a podium. 211 points, oh sorry, 68 points, and 10th position. 211 points was from his second season in the Formula 4 ADAC Championship. Obviously, in the in 2017, he had come second or seventh there, and in his second season, he improved to fourth position with 21 races, two wins, one pole, eight podiums, and as I said, 211 points. He also raced in two other series now FIA Formula 3. European Championship, obviously he uh, didn't race a full season there, he was doing other things to a four titles, but um, he raced only three races, no wins, no points, but um, this was as uh, a guest driver, I believe, yes, he was a guest driver, so he was ineligible to score points anyway, um, but yeah, he did race three races in Formula 3. But yeah, he was a guest driver, so I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, but yeah, three races in F3 and raced in the 2018 edition of the Macau Grand Prix. 
uh, he came 15th there, but obviously at the time he was only uh, 17, so, um, or 16 or 17. So, I don't think you can expect too much from a 16-year-old there. So then we move up to 2019, where he raced in, again, the Macau Grand Prix for the second year in a row with SJM Prima Theodore Racing Quitno from 2018. He raced all four of those series with Van Amersfoort Racing, so that's why I said earlier they were quite important because they gave him four different championships to race in in 2018. However, 2019, he raced the Macau Grand Prix with SJM Prima Theodore Racing. This time he improved, but still only managed to get 10th. So, um, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's an okay performance, but uh, 2019 was a big year for the Denmark driver, or the Danish driver, I should, I should say. The Formula Regional European Championship, where he would win that championship with prima power team 24 races in that series he won 13 of them took 10 pole positions and 20 podiums that's 467 points that that's complete domination that's lewis hamilton levels of domination he completely stole that championship and because of that, he would get a full-time drive with Prima in Formula 3 for 2020. Now, this season wasn't incredible, but it was good for uh, an opening season in Formula 3, if you don't count the 2018 guest drivers, three races. But he did race the full 18 races, um, or, or, you know, it might not have been full, but it was 18 races. He won three of them. Took a pole, one pole position and four podiums, 146.5 points, coming fourth overall. For me, that is a very successful season. Obviously, in the lower formulas, you want to do better. But this season now, he stays in Formula 3, this time with ART. Um, and, and maybe you would say if you're with Prima, you have a better chance to win. But I do think with ART, he has still a good chance at first, second or third. And I think if he does get in that top three, he has a decent chance of moving up to F2. I think he, he needs to uh, put in a lot of wins. Um, I would say, you know, he needs to be getting regular podiums, you know, a lot of poles, a lot of wins. And Mercedes will definitely um, pull the trigger and move him up to formula two and then maybe we will see him in formula one in in the coming years um with with williams most likely if he is still with mercedes because we know that not only um are williams already taking on a lot of mercedes junior drivers but well not really a lot but you know george russell um but they are increasing partnership with them from 2022 onwards uh, and i imagine this also includes junior drivers going there as as a uh, kind of a, a b team um you know not not a sister team like alpha tauri or, or alpha romeo but you know I think it's pretty obvious what that means for uh, Mercedes and how, the reason they are now increasing the, the use of junior drivers and signing Frederick Vesti because they know they have a place for them to go in Formula One. And I, I hope that this means we, it just means that more talented drivers who are not completely uh, from money um, do get into the sport because the more the more junior teams there are it just means that drivers who are really really talented but don't have a lot of money um, can get you know sponsored and and the teams can buy the seats for them uh, I know in Frederick Vesti's case he isn't you know completely poor um, um, but um, he could he could you know other drivers could be helped by uh, junior teams so the more junior teams there are the happier I am because it means that you know more people more talented people get into Formula One let's see what Frederick Vesti does I am pretty confident he will win the Formula 3 title that is a little prediction there um, I d obviously didn't put things like that in my prediction video but we can uh, at the end of the year when I react to them we can we can go back to little things like this that's why I'm officially predicting 
Frederick Besti to win the Formula 3 2021 title. Um, I'm not sure when the opening round is. Obviously, they've done testing in Austria, uh, but it will be soon. So, have a good day. I hope you learned a bit more about Frederick Vesti. I hope you've learned a bit more about Formula 3. I hope you will follow it a bit more this year. Um, but I hope you have a, a great day. And I will see you soon in a bit.